Snap turtle in a truck on his way to to work. Got to make a quick stop, but first thing I want to talk about, and I'm gonna get right into it, is I'm going to. Uh, I told Derek Williams I would address uh, a question he had on my uh, on my little video I did this morning that I uploaded this morning in regards to hitting the hitting the bag without gloves on and without a wrap. Now his question, he told me he saw a video where a Krav Maga instructor, um, where a Krav Maga instructor was saying that the, the worst thing you can do in a fight is punch. Um, and then he said that he saw the guy had somebody punching at him and he tired him out. Um, I haven't seen the video, I asked him to produce it, but this is what I have to say about Krav Maga, okay? I took Krav Maga classes for about four months, okay? Now, I had decided that I was going to get back into boxing training and things like that. I had done it before, and I had done some other things in, in the military. And, uh, you know, I it had been a long time since I did any boxing training, but it didn't take much for me to get back in a groove, okay? Um, but this Krav Maga class I, I took had a uh, boxing instructor, okay? His name was Mike. He was an old head, okay? Uh, a very old school boxer. He was in his maybe 70s or, or 60s or something like that, but he was still in great shape. And, you know, the Krav Maga instructor hired him to, you know, draw in some, some extra some different type of customers, you know? The dude was a brother, a, a black uh, a black dude. And, um, you know, he, he had that old school boxing style that he taught. And so I would go to Krav Maga class first. I would go to uh, Beginner's Krav Maga. And then I would go to Advanced Boxing after that, okay? Because it didn't take much for me to pick it up. Like I said, um, I had, you know, I, I, went, I, I got right back into it. It didn't take no more than three weeks for me to start sparring again. Anyway, 
So I'm doing both, right? Now I'm the type of person who doesn't get overwhelmed or overloaded too much information, okay? Go to Krav Maga class, they would go to boxing and they would take and the guy and bring it to boxing, right? Like the whole style of punching and, and all that and, and the footwork. And Mike had to keep getting on the head about don't bring that Krav Maga stuff up here. Okay. Derek Williams, they do teach box, uh, punching. They do teach punching in, in Krav Maga. I don't know what this guy's talking about, but I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it like this. The way they punch, every punch is kind of strange. In Krav Maga, you're more square towards your opponent, right? You're squared up to your opponent. You're giving them your whole full frontal, right? And then every time you punch, you're swaying to one side, right? You're leaning to one side for that punch. So you don't, there's really no, there's no jabs or crosses in is everything is in front of you and you're turning your foot in a direction that you're uh, you know what i mean in, in the opposite direction of the arm you're punching with it's kind of strange right it's supposed to put more power behind that punch but you're not really turning your hip your arm punches and crowd my god okay now and, and it's kind of slow it's slower right whereas the way in boxing you incorporate a lot of things you do you do not you're not just punching now Derek said something about uh wearing the guy out and making him tired well i'll tell you if you're a trained boxer and you're or a trained muay thai fighter or something like that somewhere they use a lot of strikes you're training for endurance. You're training for uh, you're you're training to go hard. You're training to get your wind up. You constantly you're doing cardio. And you're doing things like that. You know to 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 go, to go a while. So a trained fighter, um, like a trained boxer, someone who who is training to don't get tired like that. Okay, now. So this one guy who was uh, who did Krav Maga for, for years and years and years started taking Mike's class. He wanted to get a little bit of a variation in his training. And so the Krav Maga instructor would, would always try to tell Mike, oh man, well, why do you guys do that? Why don't you do it like this? And Mike's like, look, man, I don't tell you how to kick. Don't tell me how to punch, essentially, right? You know, and the Krav Maga started to kind of look down on boxing a little bit because he felt like it wasn't efficient enough. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what the was doing. Um, Anyway, so the dude I was telling you guys that was training in uh, Krav Maga for years, he was sparring with 
the Krav Maga instructor, that boxing instructor in his in his gym, and the dude that was using dude that just started taking um boxing classes for a couple months folded the instructor folded him like put him put him down like in a sparring session using boxing <laughs> you know what i'm saying caught him in the body and needless to say the dude was embarrassed and he and he and he began to have a little bit more respect for boxers so um dare to answer your question when, when you see these videos where they say don't punch okay and they have they're demonstrating with a guy and you know a lot of that is choreographed and orchestrated okay it's not natural now tell um tell the crowd maga instructor to get into an actual real sparring match or a, or, or, or a match against a boxer or a muay thai fighter or somebody that actually just someone who uses punching okay he's it's, it's different see when when you're when you're trained to punch well first you gotta train punch properly right and that's why i tell you guys to relax your shoulders okay you're relaxed everything is relaxed you're not wasting energy when you're relaxed and even when you throw your punches you're not using the power until the end of the punch so you, you you're wasting minimal energy okay and at the same time you're not leaving your arm out there for a guy to put you in an arm lock or bash your hand away and you're not going to fly all, all across the, all across the world when you're punching at somebody what you're going to do see that's why footwork is very important boxers we train in muay thai we train not to throw all of the momentum of our body into every punch we we, we whip and we snap okay and we get our hands back real quick we're, we're moving around we're using footwork to box around our opponent we're not just standing there don't punch just leaving them out there like that doing that because I've, I've seen i've seen these videos where okay they're talking about how it's not good to punch and they got the guy punching like this or punching like that or you know they're not really punching they you know it's not you know what i mean so yeah so that's that's all i gotta say about that part okay um give me a minute i'll be right back
Interesting. I wonder if y'all are getting my notifications. Whatever. Anyway, so yeah, that's enough about that part, right? Got it. Got it. Uh, that's how. That's how. That's how it goes. You know. So now. Now we're going to get into uh, Candace Owens. Really, it's the guy, uh, this dude, a black dude, goes by the name, the YouTube name of The Amazing Lucas. Now, the, the, the first video I saw from him, from The Amazing Lucas, what's up, man? Did you get a notification? Um... The first video that I ever saw from the amazing Lucas was a, like a, a video game review or something like that, having to do with the Spider-Man game or something like that. Um, you know, I, I, I see him uh, as quite the nerd. You know, he's, he's a nerdy type dude. So, so the amazing. Lucas is a black dude, right? And um, he talks about a lot of topics. And like I said, the first video I saw, he was talking about the amazing girl, girl or the six-year-old boy who was staying with his moms, right? Moms and dad aren't together. So they are not together. And the the, the little boy, six-year-old boy, splits his time is dressing this kid up in drag like a tranny right and when when he's with his mom anyway signal. so um so the mother is is forcing this kid to dress up and drag pretty much and then when the kid goes to his pop's house he wants to he wants to be a boy he dresses up as a boy he says he wants to be a boy and then he's telling his pops that look mom's is making me dress up as a girl so he's like nah you ain't doing that no more okay so he started enforcing his fatherhood enforcing his masculinity as a father and starting to raise his son as a man now what the mother did was took this dude to court and the court sided with the woman and said that he was abusing his son because the mother's telling the court that her her son wants to dress as a girl he thinks he's a girl and all this other shit and the court dictated that the father could not dress him uh, treat him as a boy okay the court said look you're it's abusive if you tell your child that he can't be a girl or you know uh, he can't be a girl so and the amazing lucas's point of view on that type of thing I agree with. It. I started watching more of the videos. I said, "Okay, that's a good take. It's a good point, right?" He's talking about how how much bullshit that is, and how the courts are always siding with the women in these cases, and all that. And this is very destructive to the children. So this is what we have when we have the court system involved in our parenting and in our marriages and things like that. When you put your kids in the court system, I mean, and she's foul. The mother's foul. Okay, point blank and period. I have a problem with that. It, it, it's disgusting that you're forcing your child. The child does not want to dress up as a girl, okay? He doesn't want to do it, but you're forcing him. He's he's acting and behaving like a boy around his pops. His pops is not forcing that on him. What is up with that? Why, what, what's in the mentality of that? What's in the mentality? What's up with that? Now, okay, from that point of view, me and him share a lot of uh, uh, similar ideals, okay? About uh, um, pure masculinity, uh, you know, not believing in gaydom. Like, I don't have a problem with people being gay, right? I don't have a problem with that. I'm not a homophobic. I'm not afraid of gay people. That's what homophobic means. I'm not afraid of gayness. I'm not afraid of gay people. I just think it's a disgusting lifestyle, man on man, okay? Girl on girl, I'm a little biased. You know, I'm, I'm a little double standard on that i mean i'm not gonna get into the whole psyche of, of that but in terms of 
male homosexuals, I think it's disgusting. I think the whole act, I think the anal prolapse and all these, you're more susceptible to diseases. It's just, it does, I mean, it's an exit only. Like, I, I'm just not down with that. You know, but I do have gay friends, you know? And I don't say F you because you're gay. You know, they, they are who they are. They like who they like and, you know, well, we're for, our friendship is strictly platonic. Now, the problem that I do have with uh, the the amazing Lucas, as he calls himself, is that, that his point of view on blackness in America and his point of view on racism. Okay, so listening to him talk, just go check the guy out. The amazing Lucas. The way he talks, his his voice, his inflections, uh, his I'm not even going to say his vocabulary. I'm going to say the way he talks, okay? You can tell he was raised in a suburban type environment. So he's a his point of view is a product of his environment, okay? And then when, when you have people like that, okay, their point of view is very narrow. They haven't experienced much of life, okay? They might be seeing shit outside of what they're used to and assigning a type of blame or a type of uh, 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 the causation to something else, right? So, one problem I have with him is, you know, he hates he hates black Democrats, right? Like he has a real problem against uh, with with black Democrats, and he is a black Republican. Okay. Now, this is my this is my point of view on black Democrats. I think they are being bamboozled. I think they're being fooled into following behind these uh, leftist elite people that really are racist. I, I agree with him. He says that white elite leftists are racist, right? Are racist. They're racist and they're using the plight of black people or they're using, they're, they're making up the plight. This is what he thinks. He thinks that the leftist elite are creating narratives that don't exist, like racism, things like that. Um, he's one of those put yourself up by your bootstrap type of people without acknowledging that not everyone has the boot to pull to pull goddamn bootstraps up by. So. One, and, and that's what I have a problem with. He ignores the existence of systematic uh, racism in this country. OK, and then he, he, he likes to use Malcolm X. He likes to throw Malcolm X videos into his shit. And I'm like, look, man. I went on the comments. I said, look, you're using Malcolm X, but Malcolm X was aware of the existence of systematic racism in this country. Even though he wanted black folks to come together, pull together to, to do something for themselves. He knew that systematic racism stifles that growth that we could have. It, it, it's a fact. Systematic racism exists in this country and it's stifling to our growth as black people. Because every time we try to come up, every try, every time we try to build a, a neighborhood, build a community, they find some way to tear it down, okay? Even if we're not building up the community, even if we're just living in the community together, in the ghetto, in the hood, you know what I'm saying? They're constantly trying to do things uh, to, to, to keep us down, like gang injunctions, the projects, uh, just, there's a lot of things involved. COINTELPRO that brought about the existence of gangs and, and, and crack cocaine, things like that. The war on drugs, which was strictly, which was basically against white, black people, uh, 20s and 30s. Like all these things accumulatively have um, brought about what we have today in, 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 in black society. So, and it's still going on today. You know, system. I'm talking about systematic ra racism. Let, let, let's not talk about redneck racism, is what I like to call it, where they just run around, and call you nigger, and they they might hang you or drag you behind. The truck. They do type it. part of see, and that's still from. So, I don't know. They mess with my life big time, but um. You seem to want to ignore the blatant racism on on the on the right side as well, from the Republicans. Okay, from the white Republicans that straight out hate us. Uh, they have no use for us. They don't want our votes. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? They do. They do to a degree. 
right? Um, but they'll use us just uh, as a tool, just like the left. And that's what they're doing with people like you. So this is one problem I have with him, right? He did a video about um, Ben Carson, about what Ben Carson fool ass said on that, on that stage about slaves coming over here and all that other stuff, right? Uh, and comparing them and saying something about immigrants or whatever we came over as immigrants you know that's what ben carson said we came over as immigrants on the, the bottom of slave ships that you know who hoped and dreamed to one day own land and property here in america and some dumb shit like that okay now he agreed with ben carson right he agreed with ben carson but not only that uh the arguments that he made were against the most menial bullshit that you could ever point out in, in the argument. And he touched on the bigger argument for a little bit. Didn't really expound on it. So this is what he said. He said that people were hounding him about how uh, Ben Carson, he, they said Ben Carson was comparing slavery to immigration or whatever. And he was arguing that point like, okay, Slavery and, and, and immigration are two different things, Continue. and you can be an immigrant Five, slave. Four, okay, so that he was going seven. hard on that. Yes, they were immigrant slaves. Okay, now, when w what I had a problem with is when he started talking about Ben Carson saying that uh, slaves were dreaming of being free and, and building families and, and owning land in, in America. And I'm like, look, he said, oh, they were, they they wanted to you don't think they wanted to they dreamed of being free and owning land and and matter of fact they uh when when uh, uh we were supposed to get our 40 acres in, in a mule but andrew johnson screwed that up and he's a democrat and i'm like look man you're talking about the slaves that have been here for generations after the slave ship dropped them off and then you're also forgetting or don't have knowledge of the fact that many black folks were here. Many of the slaves that were slaves in this country, they were here before the Europeans showed up. Europeans showed up, strong armed them with, with the with the with the fire sticks, with the guns. Okay? And, and, and it goes from there. So yes, there were slaves brought over on ships, but not two hundred million. Okay? That did not happen. Uh most of them were already here. They were in the Caribbean. They were in the southern part of the northern United States whatever, or they were in the South, South United States and in the Caribbean, all throughout, okay? We were everywhere. We were already here. Let's, let, but let's forget about that, okay? Let's talk about the slaves that came over on ships. I can guarantee you that when the slaves were at the bottom of these ships with shit, excrement, uh, sickness, depression, uh, suicidal thoughts, jumping off freaking plant, jumping off the ship. Think they were not thinking about owning land in America. They didn't know what the fuck America was, you idiot. They were at the bottom, they were shackled to each other. They were crammed together. Many of them did not make it. They died. They were not thinking about owning fucking land, you fucking nitwit, okay? They were not sitting at the bottom ship saying, oh, I can't wait to get to America so that I can own some land and raise some crops. The fuck out of here, you fucking clown. You're a clown. Ben Carson is a clown. Those slaves were not at the bottom of the ship thinking about owning land. They were thinking about being free, okay? But they weren't thinking about no land. They were thinking about the horrible conditions that they were being treated in okay they're they were thinking about their women and children being raped by these nasty motherfuckers they were thinking about being whipped they were thinking about being shot they were thinking about being thrown overboard for not complying they were jumping overboard so they could not be slaves they were not thinking about owning land buying land they were are you fucking kidding me even when they got to this land, they wanted to go the fuck back home where they came from. They weren't thinking about, oh, I can't wait till we're free to get some land. No. Are you kidding me? 
If I took, not me. If somebody grabbed your ass out your house, right, on some rendition shit, took your ass to Kuwait, okay, threw your ass in a dungeon, and started and started torturing you. You're not thinking about getting free and buying land in Kuwait, nigga. You're thinking about bringing your ass home. You think about living the, to the next day. That's what you're thinking about. You're not thinking about the land of milk and honey. You're not thinking about that. Because you got milk and honey back at your place. Do you understand that? Now, I'm pretty sure you cherry picked the arguments made against you for your video. I'm pretty sure you did that because you seem like that type of dude. But I'm going to tell you, it wasn't happening like that. They were not thinking about fucking milk, uh, 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 land. Okay? So what if they were immigrant slaves? They were slaves. They were slaves first. And they were immigrants. Okay? Second. They were immigrants by force. Let's be clear about that. Okay? And in terms of institutional racism here today, talk to your boy Bill Clinton. Yes, he's a Democrat, but he's still part of the system. You may have made it, right? I may have made it. I, I joined the army. I went to college, but I grew up in Compton, homie. I lived in Compton. I lived in South Central LA. I know what's up. You see, I grew up in a different environment than you. I can already tell that. Even though I did go to college, I did go. I did go into the military. I do have a good command of the English language, like you like to talk about. But you can tell in my voice and how I carry myself that I grew up in the hood. Okay, I wasn't a gang member. You know what I'm saying? I got into some shit when I was when I was older. You know, in, in my late teens or whatever, I did some shit. But I turned my life around, and I was able to become successful soldier okay in college or whatever the case may be but i still know that most of my people aren't even get get the opportunity to make it off their fucking block see you have to have a broad knowledge of the shit you're talking about the amazing lucas what i feel like you should stick to don't talk about racial issues you don't speak for black people. And this is the problem I have with niggas like you. Holden, white races, and they love you. They love niggas like you. I'm not even gonna call you a coon, though. I'm not gonna call you a coon. I'm not gonna call you a sambo. I'm gonna call you ignorant. Cause you don't know shit about what the rest of us over here got going on. Stay your ass and your suburbanite mentality continue to talk well i'm not gonna tell you what to talk about but because i get on people about what they should say <laughs> about certain shit on youtube I, I get on people about not telling people what they should do on youtube and whatnot but i will say this to the to to any white racist motherfucker that thinks you're the shit don't think that this dude the amazing lucas speaks for black people okay don't think that because he don't 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 get emboldened and start talking your shit and, and start getting start uh, getting buck wild on, on on a black person and, and get knocked the fuck out you understand what i'm saying the amazing lucas i don't feel like you talk about racial issues i don't think you should talk about the nfl players taking a knee because you talked about that as well you said that i didn't even have to watch the video the NFL is taking the knee, but why? And I know what you're kind of getting at, but I'm going to tell you why Colin Kaepernick took a knee, even though he might be a uh, 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 controlled opposition. I'm going to tell you why he said he took a knee, because he wanted to bring light to oppression and systematic racism in this country. And he did that. We're tired of black folks being murdered for no reason. Oh, the, the dude that shot... One of, the, one of these cops that shot old boy in the back that was running away, he just got 20 years in prison. Because they knew his ass was racist. They knew he killed him because he was black. 
You understand what I'm talking about? I'm, I'm, I'm going to reveal a little bit of something about me. Just so you know that I know what the hell I'm talking about. And this is for Candace Owens too. Candace Owens, <coughs> I think she has a bigger mission. I think she will do does want the, the 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 plight of black people to improve. But she's also a hypocrite because she she talks about that how there's no racism and she sues somebody for racist racist acts. But I'm not getting into that. I'm gonna tell you something about me. My pops is black, right? My pops is all black. My mom's is black too. But her daddy was black and her and her mom's is white. So my grandma was white. But and not only that, her father was a rich oil magnate. Okay? He was an oil baron here in California. He owned all, all kind of oil derricks. He he had he, he had millions and millions of dollars. Okay. Now my grandma and her sister used to go down to the hood, Crenshaw and King Boulevard, and places like that, and hang out with with, 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 with the black dudes. Okay? They wanted they, they were slumming. Okay. My grandma and her and her sister. Okay. They wanted some black, you know, you know what I'm saying? They wanted to experience the black, uh, the, the experience of blackness. Okay. Now the difference between my grandma and my and my great aunt was that my grandma got pregnant by a black dude. My great aunt did not. Okay? And when my grandma got pregnant and had a baby by a Negro, guess what her pops did? Kicked her ass out the house, cut her ass off. We don't want no niggers in the family. Okay? That's basically what he said. Cut her off. No access to the inheritance. No access to any of that money. My pops, my, my granddad, was a singer in a band or whatever. Okay? And that's how he was making his living. And then they had go, went on to have two more children together. Okay? But they did not have access to those millions because that rich oil baron there were no niggers getting his money. That is the perfect example. That is my first experience in my family that I know about of systematic racism. Okay? Now, what's ironic is, later on down the line, one of his children, one of his children's other children's children, had a, uh, uh, got, got married to a black woman. And my great granddad is all is already dead, so he can't dictate anything. Guess what? They got they got some of that money. So anyway, the the moral of the story is racism exists in this country. You fucking clown. And if you can't see it, it's just because you haven't been educated. Something, I don't, or you're ignoring it because you feel like. The way to get all your views, you know, it, it, it's great to shit shit on black folks who are aware of racism. At the same time, you use people like Malcolm X to prove your point. This is my problem with you, bro. Talk to talk to people, talk to black folks that actually feel that way and see where their mind is at. That's what I suggest you do. Okay. Now, my grandma embittered by the fact that she was cut off and had me as a grandson right because my pops rolled out on me my black dad moved out on me when i was four years old so she was watching me all the time and i would whenever i pissed her off she'll call me a little nigger you little nigger just like that i pissed her off every day she was she was basically my mortal enemy Every time she watched me, okay? I, I, I don't know what it was. We got into a fist fight when I was like three or four years old. I, I don't know why. I, I, I remember that distinctly. I remember, you know, my grandma, my white grandmother hitting on me and I'm hitting her back and all this other stuff. 
when I'm two or three or four years old. It was crazy. But yeah, she called me little niggers all the time. All the way into my teens. That's just the reality of it. So not only did I experience institutional racism in two miles from the exit on the right. My great granddad and his family, right? But I also experienced straight up straight up racism from my grandma. So I know, I have the experience. I've been called nigger by so many people in my life because I, I lived in the South, I lived in Arizona, I lived in uh, Texas, I lived in Georgia, I lived in, uh, in all these places. And best believe, <laughs> they, they, they have something for a Negro out there in those places. You know, and it's funny, I always talk about how I've probably been called nigger more times than my, my, my dark skinned brother. My brother's real dark, one of my brothers. He's real dark. I'm, I, I guarantee you, I've been called nigger more than he has. It just, I mean, so it, when people talk about light skin privilege and shit, I have never experienced that. Never experienced light skin privilege. That's another thing too. Yeah, so Democrats, the left, the leftists, they do do a lot of divisive shit, but so do the Republicans. So I'm not a Republican or a Democrat. I'm a black man in America. Now, there, there are a couple of theories as to why Tupac was killed, right? One was that uh, Quincy Jones tried to get in his draws and Tupac went haywire. That's one theory. And then two weeks later, Tupac was murdered. And then here's another theory. Another theory is that he was talking about black people forming their own party. He had so much influence. He had enough influence to start a peace treaty with the Crips and the Bloods, okay, in LA. He started a truce between gangs. He had that much influence. He was dangerous. He was talking about black folks starting their own political party. Then he gets murdered. So it could be two twofold. It could be that, you know, uh, he was he exposed Quincy Jones' disgustingness, allegedly, alleged, alleged with the Quincy Jones story. Okay. And it could be that also he has so much influence. He was talking about black folks starting their own political party. Okay. I'm not talking about NOI or some bullshit like that. I'm talking about an actual political party where hopefully if we get more than 5% of the vote, we can get in on the debates and talk and, and talk real shit. Now, uh, Irene Yvette, that's a real sister right there. Now, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about her. Now, if you if you listen to, uh, she, she grew up in San Francisco, okay? And you, in, in her speech is very much, uh, you know, what she she speaks real proper like, right? And she acknowledged that growing up in San Francisco, she never experienced any overt racism. San Francisco is a, is a huge melting pot. Everything's integrated. There's no, but as opposed to South LA or LA County where shit is segregated like a big dog, okay? It's segregated in, in, in SoCal, okay? Watts, Compton, you know what I'm saying? Uh, South Central, places like that. Even Baldwin Hills. Baldwin Hills is an affluent black neighborhood. Uh, View Park is an affluent black neighborhood. Windsor Hills, okay? Whereas those other areas are downtrodden. Now they're gentrifying right now. But she said that she had to leave San Francisco to go to college before she began to experience racism firsthand, right? Because she was arrested a couple times for some bullshit, all right? Now, she started, as she experienced life outside of her bubble of San Francisco and affluence, because her parents are wealthy, 
she she began to understand where people like me were coming from. All right, she she acknowledges racism. She acknowledges that, even though she says that uh, she uh, she says that she doesn't believe in, in in race or whatever, you know. But she does acknowledge the existence of racism and all that. She was able to experience life to gain that understanding, because you know she was arguing, not arguing, but she was debating with this one dude who grew up in so SoCal and for some reason <laughs> was flat out denying racism. But she shut him down. She 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 showed him like, look, it is real, and she gave him perfect examples of this, and he had to concede. Now the amazing Lucas, he seems like the type of cat you can't tell him shit. I don't I, and I don't really want to debate him. I don't want to. I just want to take it to him. I want to give him a different angle of the argument about Ben Carson's st stupid ass comments, and I wanted to let him know that you ain't every black man. You ain't every black woman. You don't represent us as a whole. Just to let your followers know. He don't represent us. So you talking to an intelligent black man right here that knows what he's talking about, that knows his shit. Go back and look at my videos. I knows what's up, okay? And you like to belittle people, belittle people's mentality and intellectual prowess. Ain't happening here, bruh. Just so you know. Snowflake that shit. Just letting you know, man. You don't speak for every every black person. Candace Owens did not speak for all black people. I don't speak for all black people. But I speak for the majority. I can guarantee you that. For the black folks that experience life. I experience, I experience life. I'm 39 years old. I experience much life in different ways. I've been around the world. I've been around the country. I've I, I, I've in, 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 interacted with different cultures and different people. I know what's up. So yeah, that's all I had to say about it. I mean, it is what it is. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments or whatever. All right. Anyone want me to get to work? And uh, much love to y'all. Hit the like button on your way in or the way out. Share the video. Subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. It is what it is, and uh, I'm gonna continue to bring that real. I did a, I uploaded a, a, a video this morning about hitting the bag barehanded, okay? Cause yeah, so yeah.